I'm going to do a tutorial on how to set up the Liberty Cycler by Fresenius. I was inspired to make this video by a young lady who is interested in getting on peritoneal dialysis and she wanted to know more about the setup and what I do every night and I was trying to explain to her you know how easy it is and how I love it how it's made my life so much easier and more convenient but I realized the best way you know to explain to someone or to show them what you go through I mean and how easy this is is just to do it so girl you know who you are this is for you and I hope you are encouraged and I encourage everyone to check out do um check out peritoneal dialysis because for me it's made my life much easier and I don't have to leave my house I can do this in the comfort of my home in my room and I don't have to go away to a center to get my treatment. Also, I am not dealing with blood. So the way I do this treatment allows me to be safe and do it at home by myself without a nurse, by myself, you know. So, first you turn the machine on in the back, which I've already done. Then as it's initializing and setting up, what you should do is wash your hands for two minutes. So I've already washed my hands. And I use hand sanitizer also. So I keep everything right here. I have my hand sanitizer. I also have my supplies, gloves, caps, paper towels. And also I use Lysol, just regular Lysol disinfectant wipes to clean off the machine. So what I do is I give it a good wipe down before I start every time. So you just wipe the front. It might be, you know, who knows what could just be. Um, I got some stuff down the front. Wipe the screen. Wipe the top. This is where you'll put your bag. Just give it a good wipe down. You know, if there's anything that you can visibly see on there, of course you want to get that off. Collect dust. Just you touching it. So, then I use my hand sanitizer. Wipe my hands really good. I'm gonna really get that on there. Then I put on my gloves. And I change my gloves a lot, so it's always good to keep those close. So on the screen, you will see your treatment. And it says treatment for Layla, type of therapy. CCPD, that's the one that is specifically prescribed to me, 10,500 ml, because my total treatment overnight is 9,000, and you understand what I'm talking about, 9,000 of solution, and then I add an extra 1,500 ml at the end and do a midday for extra three hours, for a total of 13 hours. My total therapy time is 10 hours and number exchanges is 7. It's really 6 overnight, but that last one is your 7th exchange. So then I hit OK. And it'll take a minute and 30 seconds to set up as the machine is just initializing. So a little bit about me while we're waiting for this to set up. I was diagnosed with FSGS 7 years ago while I was away at school out of nowhere. Woke up, had some swelling in my face. And went to get some blood work done, and they found that I had this kidney disease. So I was away at school in Alabama. Hop on the first plane home, get home to Chicago, immediately start receiving care at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. They did a biopsy on my kidneys, and that's when they found the FSGS, which is short for focal segmental glomerulonephritis sclerosis. It's such a mouthful. I always have a hard time saying it. But, um, so then they informed me that my disease will progress to renal failure, which means I will lose both my kidneys and I will have to start dialysis. And dialysis is an artificial kidney machine. And what is different, there are two different types of dialysis. So there's hemodialysis and there's peritoneal dialysis. I started out, most people start out on hemodialysis, although you don't have to. If you know um, ahead of time which treatment you would like to do you can either you can do either one so I started out on hemodialysis because I didn't know much about peritoneal dialysis and that I could even do it at home plus I was nervous I was afraid 
to um, do it at home myself. I mean, that's normal. That's a normal feeling to be afraid and feel like, dang, there's nobody here. I don't have a nurse watching me. I'm doing it's all in my hands. So plus I listened to some rumors for some people while I was in the hemodialysis, other patients that were on hemodialysis. And needless to say, I'm glad that I decided to step out on faith and do this at home myself. So anywho, after it progressed to renal failure, I started hemodialysis and I did that for like a year and a half. But then I started getting more information about doing it at home. I started hearing about it. They would come to my center. The representatives come to my center and talk about doing PD, which is short for peritoneal dialysis. And it is called peritoneal dialysis because you are infusing, infusing a sugar-based solution into your stomach. And it uses your peritoneum lining, which lines everyone's stomach cavity, to use osmosis and diffusion to attract toxins and fluid into that stomach cavity. And so what this machine is doing for you is putting that solution in your stomach and you let that sit for like an hour, hour and a half, depending on your treatment time. Then after that sits, which is called a dwell, then you drain that solution along with your toxins and fluids and it goes either into a bag or into the toilet. And that's basically how you urinate because you no longer have kidney function which would usually urinate for you. And it's just that simple. You're just in, you know, instilling a solution into your stomach and letting it sit. And it's going to attract those toxins and your fluids that you've accumulated for the day because you no longer urinate. Well, some people no longer urinate. And if you do, it's usually not enough or helpful enough. For me, um, I had both my kidneys removed because I was still urinating as I was doing dialysis, but it wasn't helping me. Crazy, right? I know. So, yeah, I'm just out here living with no kidneys and making it. So, back to the treatment. So, set up. Step one will tell you to gather your supplies, to put on your mask, and wash hands. So, I usually gather everything that I'm going to need and have it right here already set up. Because you don't want to touch anything after you've washed your hands. And you put on your mask. You put on your mask and you do that before you wash your hands and before you put on gloves. Because once you put the strings around your ears, you've touched your hair, you've touched your face. So for sake of the video, I'm going to keep the mask down, but you usually keep your mask on. I'm going to change my gloves also because I just touch my face. Anytime you touch your face, you touch anything, touch your hair, you touch the mask. You don't think about those things, but... You've already contaminated your hands. So sometimes I do a little bit more hand sanitizer. Do, 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 do. do some hand sanitizer. And then put on more gloves. At this time, you also want to make sure all fans, vents are off or closed. The doors closed just to prevent any type of airflow that will contaminate your catheter or the machine or your supplies or anything. You just want to make sure everything's completely closed. And you hit OK. It, it will tell you to insert your cassette. So you open the door. Well, you don't hit OK yet. I lied. Don't judge me. I'm human. So. I have my boxes and my supplies. These are my cassettes. And this cassette comes completely sterile and in this bag. So you tear up the top. And I typically just throw everything on the floor, or put it in my garbage. But you don't want to touch the floor, or touch anything. So you just throw it right on the floor and you'll clean it up later. So you have to take this cassette and there are two little knobs in here. And I usually put this under my cart, under the handle. You have to make sure it's secured underneath both knobs. Like put it in and then click it down and make sure that this bottle, this bottom hand clicks in. It has to click in because this is all a pressure system 
and this is all plastic so you want to make sure there's no air that's able to get in here you want to make sure it's secure and you close the door then you hit okay that's when you hit okay and it'll tell you you have a minute and 30 seconds while remaining while it sets up so at this time what I typically do is get my bags ready, my bags of solution ready, because I'm going to start connecting these solution bags as soon as this is finished. So for me, I have to do a daily heparin infusion, and heparin is a blood thinner. So I need to put this um, medication in my bag. Don't judge me. Every night because it keeps my peritoneum lining thin and it keeps it flowing so my catheter doesn't get clogged up clogged up with any tissue that might be on the inside of my stomach which is normal it's called fibrin and fibrin is normal i've had it in my solution you know in my catheter before but just to prevent that um fibrin from clogging i have to infuse heparin every night into my bag now depending on your prescription for me your doctor will tell you how much heparin to infuse and it's not hard it's easy and they will give you needles your dietitian center will supply everything they will give you alcohol pads and i just wipe the top of the vial really good with the alcohol and make sure that sanitizes for about 30 seconds so while that's sanitizing and this is what my catheter looks like. This is my peritoneal. I've had like five. I've had numerous surgeries. That's why all these scars are on my stomach. And I used to be really self-conscious about <laughs> my catheter and my scars. But now I'm not self-conscious about it because I know how strong I am and everything I've been through. And this saves my life every single day. How can you be ashamed of something like that? So, and I got my abs going because I've been working out. Mm -hmm. So I get my solution bags and I have them all in these boxes. These are my supplies and you can tell when the delivery guy comes to set up your supply, you can tell them how to arrange them so there can be, there can be an easy for you. I have, so I have Remember I was saying I have a 10.5 milliliter amount treatment. So I have to make sure that I have enough solution hooked up to this machine to last me throughout the night plus my midday. So this bag right here is called my heater bag. This bag will always go on top. I lied. That wasn't my heater bag. This is my heater bag. So, my heater bag, I use a 2.5% dextrose solution. And it's 3,000 milliliters. So, we already got 3,000. And a good acronym that I've learned is called SCALE. So you always want to check the solution. Make sure you have the right solution. That's what the S stands for. The C stands for clarity. Color. You want to check it. Make sure it's not yellow. Because sometimes these bags, they get old. Or for whatever reason, they can turn yellow. So you want to check that always. Make sure it's clear. Amount. Like I said, I have 3,000. I always want to make sure that I have the right amount hooked up to the right especially the heater bag connection because that one is really important that's the bag that's going to warm up all of the solution and be your main primary bag that is going to infuse into you so all the other bags you hook up will go into that heater bag it gets warmed up because you want it to be as close to body temperature as possible because otherwise if it's cold which a lot of these are room temperature which is like 70 degrees your body's like 96 so you always want to make sure that this is the heater bag and it you know and it'll get warmed up for you and warm up all the other things okay the l stands for leak so you want to squeeze it 
Make sure there aren't any leaks. Sometimes there'll be a little wetness or condensation on the inside of the bag. That's normal. But as long as it's not actively leaking out. And then the E stands for expiration date. So your expiration date is at the bottom. So you want to make sure January 2017. As long as it doesn't say 2015, 2014, you get the point. So, so you will have all the information you need is at the top. So that's scale. S-C-A-L-E. And if you can remember that, you will be safe to hook up your solution. So, now I'm going to infuse my heparin. So I tear it off just a little bit. Just take the fold. This part that you're going to put your heparin in. I don't know what it's called. Let me just see. So I use an alcohol pad. And I wipe this off really well with alcohol. But it's sterile. I mean, but just in case, why not? So I grab my heparin. Take off my needle. I'm going to draw up. Now for me, since this bag is 3,000 ml, I have to calculate 0.5 ml per 3,000 ml. That is my prescription. Because you want the heparin to be diluted in this bag. So I draw up, for this bag, I'm going to draw up 1.5 ml. So I, I lied. It's 0.5 per thousand. So usually just divide. I'm just tapping the air bubbles out. So I draw up one and a half ml because it's 0.5 of the heparin per thousand or per liter. So 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 3,000 ml. One and a half in those of heparin. So I draw that up. And I'm just tapping the bubbles out, just getting the air bubbles out, squeeze it up a little bit, and make sure this is a 10 ml syringe. So I make sure I'm at one, two, four, that's like six. So I go right in between, make sure I'm at 1.5. Then I put the needle in. To the, I don't know what these are called. But there's a specific separate tube for the heparin. So I just push it down, put it in there. It's done. So I continue to take off the plastic. I'm wrap the bag. I'll just throw it on the ground. You'll clean it later. And if you break, there's a little I don't even know what to call it. Finger in there. You break that and you shake it down into it. And you go north, south, east, and west. Just to make sure it's completely broken off. And you shake it down into the bag. And you'll see it. And that's how you know your um it's completely open. There it is. Your heater. So I put this bag on the heater. What I'm going to do now is just break off the paper off of the plastic tubes. And this is my heater tube. It's red. It will always be your heater tube. It's red. Heat. Red. So connect this. You take off the top. And you're going to connect it and just screw it right on to the bag. Turn this around and make sure the bag is in between the lip, the two lips here. Throw these caps away. Done with the heater bag. My next bag, another three three thousand ml bag. I do scale. Check the solution. It looks okay. It's clear. Check the clarity. I mean, check the solution. It is 1.5. So now this one, for me, I'm, I do a mixture. I have a 2.5% dextrose bag up here and a 1.5% dextrose bag. Because for me, I mix, this is a green bag and this is a yellow bag. I mix the two.
So that way it doesn't pull off too much of my fluids. And that's just kind of the mixture that works for me. You'll find whatever mixture works best for you. So, like I was saying, scale. Solution, 1.5%. Clarity, make sure it's clear. Amount, I have the 3,000. Leaks, I squeeze it. Make sure there aren't any leaks. I don't see any. So there's a little condensation on this bag. And this is what I meant by condensation. You see the bag looks a little wet on the inside. And that's fine. It's been through a lot of temperature changes from the warehouse to the truck to my house. So there will be a little condensation. But as long as it's not actively leaking. And expiration. This one expires December 16th. That's fine. So I tear it open a little bit. Like I was saying. Like I did with the previous one. Grab a needle. And you should change out your needles for each bag just for sterile purposes. Get my alcohol. Scrub the top of the heparin vial like I did before. Okay. So I scrub the top with the alcohol pad. Take another alcohol pad. And scrub the little tubey thingy. I don't know what to call it. So you scrub that for about two seconds. Pop open your needle. There's a 10 ml syringe. Get your heparin. Do the same exact thing. 0.5 for every liter. So 3 liters, because 3,000 ml is 3 liters. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's one and a half. So. Shake out the air bubbles, because you don't want that going in your bag. Put it in the tubey thingy. Simple. There's my little tangent finger. I pop that north, south, east, west. Shake it down in the bag. Sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But you want to make sure that, you, and the machine will let you know if you're not getting a good solution flow in there. And let's remove the plastic. And you will see it, it's down in there. I shook it down in there. So, next, your second connection. This is the white one. The white ones are always extra solution bags. So these bags are like secondary bags. So all the solution from this bag will eventually infuse into that heater bag and then infuse into you. So now I have 3,000 mLs, 3,000 mLs. Remember I said my treatment is 10,500. That's not enough. I have to hook up one. So this bag, you just hang on the side of the cart. There are usually two hooks on the side of the cart and the bag will hang like so. So down here, you will see the rest of the connection. I only have one more connection to hook up. One more solution bag. This bag is much bigger than the last two. This is my third solution bag. This one is... 5,000 milliliters. So that's 5 liters. See? 5 liters. And this is also a 1.5 solution bag. So this is a yellow bag. This bag is bigger because I'm already at 6,000 ml and I need to get to 10.5. If I add another 5,000 bag, what's that? 11,000. You always want to go a little bit over your treatment volume, so that way while it is priming and while solution is being put through the lines, you will have enough for your treatment and for whatever extra little solution you may have to account for. 
So, scale. Solution. This is 1.5. So, usually my two bags that hang along the side are usually the same amount, but they don't have the same solution, but they don't always have to be. But for me, I like more yellow and just a little bit of green. And this green, this 2.5, just takes off. And because it's 3,000 milliliters, it takes off a little less than if all of these bags were green. Because a lot of times I'm not really overloaded with fluid. As you can see, I don't have you know, much fluid or swelling on my body. So, scale. Solution, clarity, amount. My amount is 5,000. It looks clear, looks good. No leak. There's no condensation on this bag. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little condensation, a little droplet. That's fine. No active leak. I squeeze it. Nothing's leaking. Expiration, January 2017. You'll have different bags with different expiration dates. They'll probably be close just as you get shipments and certain boxes get moved around and pushed up. But you always want to make sure that, like I said, your expiration date is at least a year out or couple months out I mean just to be on the safe side I usually don't have bags that are within the same month that I'm doing them it is October 2015 so this doesn't expire to 2017 I should be okay so do the same thing with the other bag I, usually, I like to just tear it a little bit expose my 2B thingy that's where medication always goes. And there's like a little rubber stopper there. So clean off the heparin with an alcohol pad. Scrub, 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 scrub. Like 10 seconds or so. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't take medical advice from you. So I'm just showing you what I do. Then I scrub the 2B thingy. And what works for me may not always work for you. But you'll have to find what works best for you. Scrub, scrub, scrub. So I've scrubbed that, sanitized it. Get my other needle. Draw up my heparin. Now with this bag, since it is 5 liters, and I'm doing 0.5 heparin per liter, you're really just dividing by half. So... That'll give you 2.5. So this one, unlike the others, I have to put a little bit more heparin in this bag because it has the heparin has to be diluted. So 2.5. See? Uh oh. There it is. That's about 2.5. Snap out the bubbles. Let's do the same thing. Put it in the tubey thingy. You see the tangent in there. You want to break that. North, south, east, west. Just to make sure it's completely broken off and allows for good solution flow. Take it down into the bag. Now, I will hook this one up to another white clamp because this is a third, this is a solution, another extra supply bag that will supply solution to the heater bag. Hang that on the side. Ooh, that's it. Next, and the screen will walk you through each step. It says connect solution line. Place bag on the heater tray, which I've done. Connect the drain line. This is my drain line. It is yellow. I like to remember that yellow equals P. So this will drain your fake P. This will drain from you into either drain bags or you can hook it up to a toilet. I like to hook it up to the toilet 
if you have one that's close, my toilet's in my, I have a bathroom in my room, so it's pretty close, but you could run it across the hall or whatever, because this, you see how long this is, it's long. But for the sake of this video, I will hook these up to four drain bags. Some people have different amounts of drain bags. I have four. These drain bags, there's the new Liberty Dialysis drain set. You always want to make sure that it's the right drain set. Just open it. And there are four bags. Here's one. There's two, three, four. So, these also have yellow clips. See, yellow. Uh oh. Here it is. And yellow. Connect the two. Here's the drain bag connection. Machine connection. Twist off. Twist off. You usually have your mask on, but I just hold my breath as I twist it off because you just don't want to breathe into the connection or on it. And look, it is connected. This goes to the machine. This goes into the bag. So all of your excess solution and waste and the toxins and everything from your stomach and your dwell and your treatment will go into these bags or into the toilet depending on your preference and sometimes I have to drain into the bags in order to collect specimens so you just want to make sure those are spread out on the floor that they're not on top of each other they're equally just spread out throw those in the floor and they will teach you all this in training after that is connected, I hit next. And it says I have 2 minutes and 56 seconds for it to set up. So what it's going to do is it's the machine is going to make sure that all of these bags are clear, are open, are don't judge my box. I'm just gonna try it in here. I've that box a long time. Um and this is my cassette. And my lines. So, this machine is going to make sure that all of these bags are open and are ready to infuse. There are no blockages. Prime all the lines through. Just recognize this cassette and everything that I just set up. And that's very important. You definitely want it to recognize all of the bags. And it will, and the machine, I don't know how, it's magic. The machine will know. If you don't have enough solutions set up for your treatment, if I didn't have 11,000 ml set up, it will know and it'll let you know hey, you need to add some solution, add another bag. So, as that's going, what I like to do something new I started just as a dialysis patient, you tend to lose weight, you lose muscle mass, and I do some squats. So, I do some, I do about like 20 squats while this takes three minutes. I just hold the bag. This is an old bag. It's not one that I will ever use. It's not in plastic. Or you can use one that's in plastic. But I just do some squats while I'm waiting. Squats. Squats. And I do some arm exercises. However many reps you can handle, and then I lift them over my head. And this is about a 10 pound bag. So, as you can imagine, doing this every single night will build up your muscle mass, keep you healthy, give you a little exercise. You don't have to feel pressure to leave your house or go to the gym. And you're going to do this treatment every single night. I've been doing this every single night for three and a half years. Why not get in a little exercise? Sometimes I do some leg lifts while I'm just waiting. And as you can see, my little exercise has been paying off because I got some muscles here. Got a little, getting some tone in and 
Now it says I only have three seconds left. So, um, I listen to music, I listen to podcasts, or I watch a TV show. And this all usually only takes about like 30 minutes. But because I've been talking and slowing it down, um, it's going to take a little longer. But this treatment doesn't take long at all. It's easy. They walk you straight through. Everything is color screen. That's what I like about it. It's touch screen. So, technology-wise, it's very up-to-date. And it will let you know you know if there's air in your lungs, if you know there's anything wrong with it, it will let you know, hey, something's going on, it'll alarm. I just wait. Like I said, I usually have music playing, but you know, sometimes that's not appropriate if you can't focus on the treatment. I've been doing this so long that I usually listen to podcasts or, like I said, watch TV or something else going on in the background. Because a lot of times you're just waiting for the machine to acknowledge everything and to set up. And we're almost kind of done with this setup. It really is that simple. I don't need any more of the supplies. I'm done with that. But I would say the best thing about PD like I said, is that you can do it at home yourself. You're not dealing with blood. It's safe. And you hook up right before you go to bed. So I hook up right before I'm ready to get in bed. And it does, the machine does everything. And if it, you have any issues at night, if it's clamped or anything, then it'll alarm. So this part of step four says verify bag connection. Press back to repeat bag detection test. So, on the screen you will see last bag, which is a green bag. Bag three, bag two, bag one, and heater bag. Those three bags. Hit next to continue. Now that will take a minute and four seconds to flush. So now it's flushing fluids through the lines. And that will go into the drain bag. So now, the last part of the setup says priming. So ensure the blue line clamp is open. Your blue line clamp goes to you. Blue always goes to you. Blue, you. Blue, you. Blue, you. Blue, you. Okay, you get the point. Make sure this is unclamped and it is open. It's okay if it's still, you can take the paper off and unwrap it. And this is pretty long too, in case you need to move around your room or it doesn't go that far. So you may be able to go to the hallway and back, but... You can also get different footage of lines. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Because this one's like 25 feet. So make sure that clamp is open because now it's going to prime your solution up through this line and get ready to come to you. So I just put it back and you want to always make sure that this part is always below the machine and is always put here if you have it raised up or above it's gonna make it really difficult for the solution to get up there because it's mainly gravity that pushes this through so you want to make sure that this is below the cassette in the machine so There's music in my head. So, while we wait, it just takes a lot of patience. And I've just gotten used to doing this every single night that I've become very patient. And it's really only like 30 minutes. I mean, that's really not a long time. Consider we don't prefer hemo. But I'm not going to talk down on hemo because it has saved a lot of lives and saved my life in, in you know, numerous instances. So, but it's just not for me, not what I prefer. I prefer to do this, and I do it myself. And I'm almost done. And then next, I just have to connect it to myself. So now the prime is complete. And it'll tell you, close the patient line clamp or press back to prime again. Now, if you look at this and you don't see a little, you should be able to see your solution. It should be like a little, you see like a little bubble you see that little bubble in there that lets you know that your solution 
has been primed all the way up to the tip. And that's what you want. You want it primed to the tip so it's ready to go. It's ready to be hooked up to you and to start your treatment. Make sure there are no air bubbles in the lines. Make sure the lines are like all clear. It looks good. You don't see any air. But usually the machine will let you know. But it won't always let you know. And that's just something you have to look out for. So you press, you close the patient line clamp, which is this blue line. You want to now you want to clamp it because as you open this, you don't want all the solution to run out. Clamp it, bang. Now you hit next to continue. It'll ask you enter a daytime menu exchange. Did you do a daytime menu exchange? Remember I was saying that at the end of my treatment I have to infuse. 10, use 1.5 liters to do my midday. So here it'll say no. I click it to highlight it and press the up button. Always hit yes. And I hit OK. And it'll go to the next. How much did you feel yourself after you drained? 1.5. But if you have a midday and you have to drain that midday, you won't have that same 1.5 liters in your stomach. So I always make sure. That I put 50 mLs. You always want to put above 50 mLs milliliters because the machine will think that it needs to take out that 1.5 liters, which is 1500 mLs, out of you because that was the last thing it put in you. But if you drain it throughout the day without this machine knowing that, which usually when you drain it, it's a manual drain, so you won't use the machine. The machine doesn't know that. And it is kind of set up to where if this is less than 50, it will keep trying to drain that 1500 out of you. So you always want to do 50 mLs. I've had situations where I did this was at zero or 20 or 25, something less than 50. And I went to hook up and it just kept pulling, pulling on me and trying to suck out solution that wasn't there and it would never buy it wouldn't let me bypass or roll over to the next cycle so and i'll do a video later on of, on how to bypass if you ever get stuck in a cycle and you hit next so it says press next to continue then it'll confirm daytime exchange yes manual fill volume 50 milliliters press next to confirm or you can go back to re-enter. If you notice it says 20 or 25 or 30 and you made a mistake, you can go back. You can hit back and change it. Or you put no on accident. I've done that before, just rushing through it. So you want to make sure you take your time and you look at it. So I hit next. Now it says it's ready for treatment. So I use aseptic technique to connect the blue line to yourself. Now, I'm not ready to connect this because it's not time for me to go to bed and do my treatment yet. I typically change my gloves after I've done setting up just to be extra sterile. Use a little hand sanitizer. Change your gloves. And depending on how your center tells you to clean your catheter before you connect it. So I usually like to scrub the tip of my catheter with alcohol because there's beta down here in this cap just to keep it sterile but I like to just scrub it extra anyway. So this is me. This is my catheter that's connected to me. Make sure your mask is on before you open your catheter or the blue line. So I'm not going to open this because you always want to make sure during you use sterile technique, make sure you know you don't have any fans on or anything before you open this. Make sure your mask is on. Make sure everything's sterile and clean as much as possible to in prevent infection. So then it'll tell you to open the blue line clamp. And your catheter clamp, remember? Here is the blue line clamp. So once you connect it to yourself, you open these and just connect it and twist. 
it's going to open the blue line clamp and then open the clamp that is attached to your catheter. And you just click it up and it unclamps. But if you ever, I just dropped this, if you ever drop this, I hate to tell you, but it's best that you just completely start all over with reset up the whole machine. So once I'm done, I will reset up this whole machine just to prevent any form of infection. If anything touches the ground, I advise you to please, please, please re reset up and start all over. I mean, it's only 30 minutes. This is your life at hand. So that's how I do my dialysis every night. And it's that simple. I mean, this is life-saving treatment that I'm doing every single night and that I'm setting up every single night. And I can definitely say this is one of the best decisions that I've ever made. Um, but one thing I've learned is that you'll definitely get used to it, becomes routine. I mean, I have a whole system of how, you know, I take my medicine, I check my vitals, you know, do all of that, start winding down for bed, start setting my machine. That takes 30 minutes, you know wash my face, brush my teeth, do all the things, you know, to prepare for bed, you know, do a, get a little exercise in, and start my treatment, and then after 10 hours, it's done, I unhook in the morning, I'll probably do another video showing how I unhook from my machine and start my day, I feel good, I feel healthy, I feel the best that I've ever felt, I feel, you know, I have energy, and I can go and go to work, or Go hang out, go out to eat, do what I like to do. And it definitely improved my quality of life. I mean, I never thought that I would ever, you know, be on dialysis, let alone be adjusting to it, accepting it, and just incorporating it into my life. And this machine saves my life every day. I'm very confident that I will get a kidney transplant soon. So keep me in your prayers. And that's it <laughs> hope you enjoyed my tutorial and good luck you can do it